Good morning, beautiful, beautiful people. Jan Hicks here of Jan Hicks Creates. Feeling so, so grateful to all of you and all your brilliant suggestions. You guys just know so much about so many things and I am so grateful not only for you coming here and, you know, watching me all the time, but for being willing to take the time to, take the time to talk to me, to, to help me through a dilemma, to write out different steps. I mean, you guys took a lot of time yesterday giving me suggestions, and I really appreciate that. So let's see, it is Friday, June 7th, 7.40 in the morning. I'm still apparently in Wahiwa, according to my watch. I am not in Wahiwa, <laughs> but my watch thinks so. And it, yes, it is back to 72 degrees and sunny. <sighs> so, first things first. What am I working on today? This is the next to last day of my stitch mania. Mania. <laughs> I am gonna miss it. I've had a lot of fun this month. I'm working on, let's see, Vitreous Art number two is the name. It is the Russian design. The kit manufacturer is Oven. This is the one where there's three different designs in the series, and I do want to stitch all of them, but I only own the one kit. I got this from um, So and So, the the site So and So in the UK. It did come with Ada. This is the one that I originally thought I was going to stitch on a 40 count linen, but it has the blends, it also has sections where you use one strand over two, and then two strands over two, both half cross stitches doing that and full cross stitches doing that to totally change. You can really see that down here in this orange. These stitches here are all one over two, and these ones are two over two, and you can really see how that changes the texture and the depth of the stitches. So um, when I realized that, I knew that 40 count, where I'd have to do one over one, would not work. This is Tycho, or Tycho, not sure how to pronounce that. 32 count teal, very kindly sent me a piece that she had that works perfectly. And it is such a pretty, pretty, I don't know whether you can see on the camera, but there's grays and there's yellows. Um, just a gorgeous linen. So, back to this piece, absolutely in love with it. And this is one that is going to get added to my year of BAPS because it, it's act, it actually goes pretty quickly. I think I can get done with this fairly quickly. I know. And the audience laughed. <laughs> oh my God. Guys, all right. Back to things unseen. So, again, your suggestions are just all so brilliant. And so many of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, all right. So yesterday I did get that little piece done in the middle here. I also got the word most done. And then I stopped because as I continue to read your brilliant comments, I became less and less certain what to do. This is such a pretty piece. I don't want to screw it up. So many of you said, Jan, just use this beautiful section as a small and start over. 
and there is a large part of me that is leaning towards that option because I don't know, I don't know whether this will work at all. Cheryl and um, Mary Lou, both longtime seamstresses, said, Jan, you're biting off more than you can chew. The effort to line up the threads of the fabric so that it looks okay when you're stitching those areas that um, are together, the chances of getting them lined up perfectly, not only would it be a monumental task, but um, if you don't get it lined up, it's just gonna look stupid. <laughs> They didn't put it in those words, but that's really what they meant. And I get it. So many people had great suggestions. Um, seaming it and then doing vine, stitching a vine over the seam and just starting your stitching over in the clear area so you don't have to worry about the seaming. Um, putting it down on a bigger piece of fabric, stitching it down, and then continuing your stitching on. Even with that, though, you'd have to worry about it being lined up. Um, Laura suggested a kind of 3D look, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't really understand, but I think it's the idea of having, like continuing to stitch on this and having the border on a separate piece, but the, the problem is, yes, this piece is big enough for the whole design, but I didn't start, you know, over here, so I would not have enough room here to, to, to put the rest of what I needed on there, even if I put the border on a separate piece. Um, so yeah, all kinds of wonderful suggestions. Cheryl offered for me to send the pieces to her. She's the one who's been a seamstress for over 40 years. Um, and that, that she offered to try and put it together. Again, I don't know whether it's worth the hassle. I have all this beautiful linen. I could very easily start again. So that's what I'm leaning towards. Although, you know, the other half of me says, but Jana would be so cool if it worked. <laughs> it would be very cool if it worked. I just don't know if it's worth the hassle. So yeah, right now I'm leaning towards cutting out this section. I would continue to fill in the little bee and the little bees over here and maybe, um, maybe put some of these little diamonds. I don't think I'd even need to do that. Just fill in some of the bees and this bee here. The problem is where would I cut it? I would probably have to, I guess if I cut it like right above this stitched line here, that would give me enough to, to do the seaming for a pillow. Yeah, I have enough over on this side. I could just cut it right along this line here and I'd have enough. So guys, I do appreciate all your time and effort that went into helping me with this. I am leaning towards just cutting my losses as it were. I could even take that little line. But anyways, it's not like because most of this is letters, it's not like it took a long time. This this took a fairly, fairly good chunk of time. But anyway, that's kind of where I am with that, which is basically nowhere. <laughs> Onward and upward. And as Cheryl also said, it's probably not something I should worry about dealing with before we leave anyway, as I have enough to enough to be getting on with. So what else has been going on? I did call, so I told you about the muslin bags that Dying to Stitch did order them. I haven't heard, I, I got in touch with several other people and I haven't heard back from them, which is fine. I am more than happy to direct all the business to Dying to Stitch. Um, I actually didn't get in touch with Barb at Keepsakes. 
I may wait and, to, and talk to her in person at StitchCon. But I did go ahead and order 10 bags from Dying to Stitch. They, um, Anne said that they were told, Uline told them that the bag should get in today. They were only shipping from Pennsylvania to Virginia, so um, I could see that happening. So I ordered 10 and I am having them shipped to Phoenix so that I will get them out there. I didn't want to take the chance of, because things do take longer to get out here, I didn't want to take the chance of um, passing them <laughs> in the night, as it were. So I'm just having them shipped to Phoenix, and that way I, I will have them to take to StitchCon with me to show around at StitchCon and talk about. I did um, suggest to Ann that if they didn't already have a stamp, with their store name on it to have one of those made. Those are those are fairly easy to get these days. And stamp all the bags, like get an acid-free ink and stamp all the bags with their, with the store name. And then you could, if you wanted to, you could embroider or stitch around it. Somebody mentioned, I think Edwina maybe mentioned um, the idea of using waste canvas, or maybe Cindy mentioned, um, using waste canvas and stitching, cross stitching something on the bag, which I think is an awesome idea too. So, in fact, oh my God, my brain just explodes. Although it'd be a pain in the butt to stitch through the bag, wouldn't it? I mean, you wouldn't stitch through the bag, but just through one layer of the bag. Hmm, because I was thinking I could get some waste canvas before I went and work on one of those at StitchCon. I might go ahead and do that. I would love to put one of the little pansies from the French book, or even like this little design, some of those flowers. Wouldn't that be pretty? Just kind of scattered through. Oh my God, I know. There it is. That's the big one. All right, my brain is like exploding. But wouldn't that be cool? But it would be a pain to try and get it through just one layer of the bag. I'd want to do something smaller, I think. But anyways, is that for your brain just taking off? So, I'll be getting those bags. <laughs> I'll do something, probably knowing me with them. Oh my goodness, where am I? So somebody also mentioned in that, I think, I don't know whether I mentioned this comment or not, about again, the whole how to store your projects. Somebody mentioned king size pillow shams. You know, you get the, uh, you get the, what's it called? The, uh, not kit, the comforter set. And it has the pillow shams that you never use. <laughs> At least I never use them. <laughs> they get stuck in my closet and I always think I really should get rid of those because what am I gonna do with them? Well, roll your projects up in them like a pillow, like a project roll. OMG, how brilliant, I have two. We got a new comforter set, a quilted, uh, just a quilt set. Um, when we moved here, whoops, that was wrong. Oh, shoot. And, um, of course, they were just sitting in the closet. I'll show them on my floss tube next week so you can see what I'm talking about. But yesterday I spent some time getting all of my projects out of their bags. Since I have two, I put my long-term whips yeah, on in one, and I put my whips that I'm going to be working on in another. Now, I need more because, as you know, I have a lot of whips, and these things are rather bulky. And then I just got an index card, and I wrote on the index card what all projects were there. I'm just seeing where I'm going here. So I'm too short of that one. Yeah. Um, and then I 
just used um, safety pins and safety pinned the card to the outside of the rolled up sham so I can see easily what's in there. Now, I pretty much know what's in there because I have my list of, of you know, the baths, the active whips that I'm working on, and I know it's in there. They're not in any particular sort of order, but I know it's in there. So yeah, I think that's a brilliant idea. I do want to, when I go to Goodwill next, which will be hopefully before we leave, just because I'm impatient like that, I want to see if I can get a couple more and split that roll up into smaller ones so that they aren't all, I mean, they're not all bunched up. They're all laid flat and then the thing is rolled up, but there it is, it is bulky. So I thought that's a brilliant, a brilliant idea, a very cheap alternative to buying um, a project roll. I actually searched on Etsy for that particular type of project roll, and I only found one person in Lithuania making them. Now, I might not have used the right search terms. Um, I used project roll, needlework, cross stitch, and only came up with that one person. So yeah, I thought that was brilliant. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today is what I'm going to call your attitude. <laughs> and only in that I've had several people, like especially working the Chatelaine the other day, comment that they could never do, they, their stitching or, or the Hades, when I showed the Hades, my, my Hades the other day, the ones that I've purchased, they made the comment that their stitching isn't to the point where they could do that that they, those were too complicated of projects. And granted, they are bigger projects. But I wanted to share with you an experience from knitting that um, I think applies to the cross-stitch world as well. You guys know there are mystery stitch-alongs, right? Where you don't really know what the design is. The same thing happens with knitting. Mystery knit-alongs. Now, you kind of know, you usually know if it's a shawl or a sweater, and for the most part, these are shawls or wraps or, you know, something like that. Something that you don't have to worry about size and fitting and that kind of thing. But you don't know the configuration. You know how much yardage you'll need. You'll know if there's beads and that kind of thing. I feel like this camera is really pointed weirdly today. Or maybe I'm just pointed weirdly. I don't know. Anyway. So you know the bare minimums of the project. And usually you're doing a mystery knit along with a designer whose work you are familiar with and that you like. Right? You know, that you kind of follow and 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 have done some of her designs, that kind of thing. But you don't have any concept of the design. So each week, and they're usually four to six weeks long, you'll get a portion of the pattern and you knit it. And if it's a good designer, now I will say most of these that I've done are Laura Nelkins. She does a lot of mystery knitter longs. Her patterns are excellent, a lot of support in the Ravelry group, you know, all of that. But you don't know what you're knitting. So it doesn't give you a chance to be intimidated. You follow the instructions, you're able to do it. If you have questions, there's support out there. And usually there is video support as well from Laura for any of the tricksier bits as she likes to call them. So you don't have a chance to get intimidated. And what people have learned and they said, people on their, her Ravelry group say this time and time and time again. I would never have tried to knit this if I had seen the complete pattern beforehand. If I had seen a picture of it, I would have said, that is beyond my abilities. I can't do it. We psych ourselves out because something looks complicated. We don't even try. 
And I'm telling you, you have the skills. Cross stitch, it's just one stitch at a time. Specialty stitches, they are all explained. And again, it's just down one hole, up another. That's all it is. Usually, there's all kinds of video support. You can find video support and website support for every single specialty stitch out there. You don't have to do any guesswork. Beads, beads are easy. You stick a bead on the needle, you let it go down, you stick the bead, the whole, the um, needle down through your other hole and the bead sits there. Beads are easy. Now they're more time consuming, but they're easy. There is nothing you can't do is my message. There is nothing, the, the projects are large. And yes, there are some people that, you know, you just don't want to do a large project. It's just too much and that's fine. But don't tell yourself you can't do it because you don't have the skills. Now, if you're a beginning stitcher and you've only done one small cross stitch pattern, you probably don't want to jump into a hade. You probably don't want to jump into a, a chatelaine. But if you have any other, I mean, if you've been stitching for a couple years, if, even if you've been stitching for a couple months and you know that you really enjoy it and you like that design, especially if it's a hade, give it a try. Start with a smaller hade. Heck, go to the Cross Stitch Collectibles website and download their free fractal pattern. They have a gorgeous one this month. I didn't show that to you guys, did you? Did I? I will do that in a second, as soon as I'm done with this rant. <laughs> Download a smaller full coverage piece is, the, is my message and give that a try. I'm telling you, you can do it. You let yourself be intimida intimidated by the final project and you don't need to. All right, so that is soapbox, my, that soapbox. Let me finish these three stitches. And then, so the, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, and I, I know what I, I know about this because of Lynette, my friend down under, Cross Stitch Collectibles every month puts out a new free pattern. It is I've only gotten a couple, so I'm by no means an expert, but I believe it is usually a bookmark, a fractal, and one that is based on one of their larger patterns. And this is this month's OMG. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Mandala 8 bookmark. Now the, like I said, this is like the center of a full-sized mandala. And so you can imagine how gorgeous the full-sized one. Is that beautiful? I want to do the full-sized one. You knew I was going to say that, right? Oh my God, look how pretty that is. I think I like that better than, than the other one I'm doing. But that, don't worry, I'm going to finish this one before I start the other mandala, probably. <laughs> oh, guys, how do you put up with me? All right, that's it for today. I don't have any goals for this particular pattern because there's so much to it. Um, I'm working, the part I'm working on here is, is this handle. So let's say, actually, I'd like to get, I'll probably get the handle done, and then I'd like to get some of these purples and these flowers in. So let's see how much of that I can get done today. I am still working on Shades of Gold. Yes, Bronte, not to worry. Shades of Gold is not being neglected. I'm not going to show it to you probably until um, until my floss tube next week, So because then I'll have more to show. All right, I am out. Today is kitchen cleaning day. Wish me luck. I will talk to you guys tomorrow for the last day of Stitch Mania.
Thanks for sticking with me. I love you. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.